Hi everyone and welcome to this week's family service and this week we're continuing our series looking at Abraham. You may remember that last week we heard about the three strangers who visited Abraham and Sarah and how it's thought that in these strangers it was God himself who appeared to Abraham and promised again that he would have a child and many descendants through that child. Well, we read in Genesis chapter 21 that finally God's promise to Abraham and Sarah came true and they had a son called Isaac. Imagine how loved that child was. They had waited for so many years for his birth and he was something of a miracle, born to both parents being in their 90s. Today then we're going to continue the story of Abraham and find out what happened next. First, let's begin with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence with us. Be with us as we learn about Abraham and may we find relevance in his story for our lives today. Amen. So we're going to begin with our first song, which is called Count Your Blessings. It's a good remedy if you're feeling gloomy this morning. So now we're going to have our reading, which is from Genesis chapter 22. And it's a bit of a crazy one today. See what you think. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He called to him, Abraham. And Abraham answered, yes, here I am. Take your son, God said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much and go to the land of Moria. There on a mountain that I will show you, offer him as a sacrifice to me. Early the next morning, Abraham cut some wood for the sacrifice, loaded his donkey, and took Isaac and two servants with him. They started out for the place that God told him about. On the third day, God, and on the third day Abraham saw the place in the distance. Then he said to the servants, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice, and he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac said, father. He answered, yes, my son. Isaac asked, I see that you have the coals and the wood. But where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham answered, God himself will provide one. And the two of them walked on together. 
When they came to the place which God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. He tied up his son and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he picked up the knife to kill him. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, Yes, here I am. Don't hurt the boy or do anything to him, he said. Now I know that you honour and obey God, because you have not kept back your only son from him. Abraham looked around and saw a ram caught in a bush by its horns. He went and got it and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place, The Lord Provides. And even today people say, On the Lord's mountain he provides. Wow, that's a tough reading, I think. For God to ask Abraham to sacrifice his only son, to kill his son for God. Well, there is a lot to unpack in that reading. First of all to say is that this happened many thousands of years ago, when things like child sacrifice were a bit more normal. So um, fortunately, we've come a long way since that. Also in these times, uh, people would quite often go and offer their God a sacrifice of some kind, usually a sheep or a goat, kind of to keep their God happy. So in that sense, the story would be fairly normal in that Abraham is asked to sacrifice something to God. But here he's asked if he will sacrifice his only son, his longed for son, his miracle son, born to him in his old age, who God promised that he will have many descendants by. Why on earth would God want Isaac dead? Well, we can only presume here that Abraham trusted God so much that he believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead if Abraham were to offer him as a sacrifice. This tells us something really impressive about Abraham about his faith and that he really loved and trusted God. The other thing about this story is it remind, might remind you a bit of Jesus on the cross. Think about it. Isaac was Abraham's only son. Jesus was God's only son. Jesus was sacrificed as God's only son. In the story of Isaac, though, we know that the ram was offered by God to replace Isaac being sacrificed. Perhaps that's a bit like Jesus taking our place on the cross, dying for our sins. There are other little details too, like Abraham and Isaac went with a donkey to the mountain. And we know that Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, just a week before his death. So too, Isaac carried the wood we heard in the story. And Jesus, of course, carried the cross. The ram was spotted by Abraham, caught in a thorny bush. And Jesus had a crown of thorns on his head. It's almost as though Abraham and Isaac, through this episode, are kind of acting out what will happen to Jesus uh, in many years' time. God asks Abraham to sacrifice his son, his one and only son. Maybe there are things that we might be able to learn from this story, like the importance of sacrifice. And I'm not talking about sacrificing uh, children or sacrificing lambs or goats or anything like that. Thinking about those things that are important in our lives that actually God might be asking us to give up or to put God before those things. Maybe something like our time and what we do with our time. Thinking about giving up our time for God or for other people. Maybe giving up some of our money for God or for other people. And in that way we're putting God before that money or maybe certain relationships that are not healthy for us God asking us to give those up for him 
So we can also look to Abraham as an inspiration, as someone with incredible faith and trust in God. Abraham believed that even if he sacrificed Isaac, God would still fulfill his promise to Abraham, that he would have many descendants, and therefore that he would work a miracle and bring Isaac back to life. So we can be inspired by Abraham and by this slightly strange story. Hopefully we can still find uh, little nuggets in it for our life. So now we're going to have our next song and it's got to be Father Abraham had many sons. Hi, I'm Offa and I'll be singing Father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right? I'm Father Abraham and many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right? I'm left, I'm Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, Father Abraham. And many sons. And many sons have Father Abraham, I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, chin up, Father Abraham. And many sons, and many sons have Father Abraham, I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, chin up, turn around, Father Abraham. And many sons. And many sons said, Father Abraham, I'm one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord, right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, chin up, turn around, sit down! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> now, I thought we need to carry on um, our family tree from last week. Um, so a bit of a history lesson now as to what happened with Abraham's family. Now we know we started off with Abraham and Sarah and they had their son who we now know his name is Isaac. Now having had our reading today we know that um, Isaac wasn't sacrificed and he went on to, to grow up and to have um, a wife and his wife was called Rebecca. He married a lady called Rebecca. Like that. And um, Isaac and Rebecca had two children. They had, in fact, twins. And the twins were called Jacob and Esau. E S A U. Jacob and Esau. Um, so I've drawn them on here ready. Now, um, we're not going to do the whole of Abraham's history from Abraham all the way through to us, you'll be pleased to know. But there's one more significant kind of feature of the family that I wanted to share with you. So we start with Abraham, who has Isaac, who has Jacob, um, significantly. And Jacob had um, several wives and several um, other women that he had children with. But, so we won't name them all, but uh, in total he had 12 children. So... I'm just going to do little stick people. Is... Actually, I should be corrected and say he had 12 sons. So he did also have a daughter. The poor girls never get much of a mention in the Bible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
9, 10. There's barely room for them on the page. Twelve sons. And these became known as the Twelve Tribes of Israel because from uh, these twelve sons, um, the tribes of Israel um, were descended. And there's uh, one in particular who you may be familiar with, and that is Joseph. And this is the same Joseph um, as in Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. Um, whose father Jacob gave him the beautiful coat of many colours and then his brothers tried to uh, get rid of Joseph because they were uh, angry at him and jealous of him and they sold him to traders who took him to Egypt um, and that's how the tribes of Israel ended up in Egypt which takes us all the way through to Moses um, <clears throat> who set the people free from slavery um, God set the people free from slavery in Egypt um, through Moses, who then led them out and through the wilderness. Um, so that's a brief history uh, of this kind of period of time. And that all came from Abraham. So Abraham and Sarah, their son Isaac, who had Jacob and Esau and Jacob, with the 12 tribes of Israel descended from him. And so we see that um, Father Abraham did in fact have many sons and many descendants as God promised that he would. So there you can see in brief my family tree. So do, uh, do complete your family tree of Abraham as well um, and if you need reference to any of that have a look in uh, the book of Genesis which gives you a bit more detail. So we're now going to move on to do our craft for today. Okay, so for our craft today, we're going to be making a ram, a bit like the one that God provided um, for Abraham so that he didn't need to sacrifice Isaac. And we're starting off with a good old toilet roll or a kitchen roll tube, uh, which has been cut in half like mine. Um, and that's gonna be the body of our ram. So the first thing we want to do is to make the ram's legs. So um, we want it to basically be four little feet at the bottom here. So we're going to cut out a kind of semicircle shape at the front and then do the same again, leaving a little gap which is going to be the leg. Cut out a semicircle. Cut out another semicircle. And you should end up hopefully with four legs. Ah! Hopefully it's not too wonky. There we go. So there was our ram with its four legs. Um, now there's different ways you could decorate your ram. You could paint it uh, with some acrylic paint or poster paint, something like that. Uh, I happen to find some cotton wool. So I've decided that I'm going to decorate my lamb with a bit of cotton wool. So I've got some PVA here. And I'm just going to put that onto my tubing and start to stick on some cotton wool. Just like this. There's the start of my ram with its uh, lovely sheep's wool. Um, and then for the head, so I just got a bit of cardboard uh, and I cut out this shape, which is going to be the head of my ram. And that's going to be stuck on the top here of my toilet roll. So we want to do a face. If you've got some googly eyes or something, that would be really good. Um, I'm going to draw mine on. I 
I've got an example that I'm copying, which you'll see on the screen uh, at the end. So, don't blame me if it looks a bit more like a dog than a ram. But you'll be able to tell it's a ram because it's got a nice woolly body. Um, now, on the example I found, um, they had pipe cleaners for the horns, which has looked really cool. So if you've got any pipe cleaners or anything like that, uh, that you can kind of manipulate into a horn shape, that would be really good. Um, but I've just got some cardboard, which I'm using for mine. So I've cut out this kind of shape here uh, for the horn, which is going to go on my ram's head. Um, I'm using that first one I've cut out as a template to cut out the same shape again so that I can so that my horns match and then I can stick them on my horn shape for my ram so I'm just going to stick those on It'd probably be better with a bit of prick stick for this if you can uh, if you are doing the horns like me I still managed to do a slightly different shape but there we go um, so there's the ram's head and there's his body and um, do cover the rest of the body in cotton wool if you're doing cotton wool like me or we'll obviously uh, give it a nice paint and then we just simply need to attach the ram's head here now I'm going to try using sellotape this is the bit I haven't practiced which could be a bit tricky might need a bit of tape underneath to kind of secure it. The other thing to try if you're not happy with the way your ram's head is sitting is to potentially um, stuff something inside your um, roll, inside your tube, like some newspaper or something, and then that you can use that to sort of prop up the ram's head so that it's in the right, the right kind of angle. Um, but there we go, there is a ram, just like the one that God provided for Abraham. So if you do make a ram, do take a photo of it and share it on our Facebook page if you can. It would be really good to see uh, your creations, uh, and I'm sure they'd be a lot better than mine. And now we come to our prayers. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the example of Abraham, for the incredible faith that he showed in you, for his love for you and his trust in you. We pray that you will help us also to trust in you. Abraham was willing to give up everything for God. Help us to be willing put you before those things that we want in our lives. Help us to put you first and to be willing to sacrifice things for you and for the good of others. Gracious God, we pray for your blessing upon us in these times. We pray for those today who are sick and suffering in any way. We think of the horrible things that happened in Reading last weekend and we pray for all those who have been affected by them. We pray Lord for all those who are grieving at this time, for all those who are sad. Dear God bless us and bless our families. 
and help us to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And now we're going to finish our service today with our final song, Our God is a Great Big God. So do join in and don't forget those actions. service today. Uh, do join us next week. David will be leading our service and we're finishing with Abraham and starting a series on looking at some of Jesus's parables all about the kingdom of God. So we're going to be thinking more about the kingdom of God in the next few weeks. So do join us then and in the meantime God bless and have a good week. <laughs>